I grew up and was raised in Redmond, Oregon. And you know where Redmond is? Redmond is about 100 miles east of here in Sandy, in the central, central Oregon. Now, Redmond is a very different climate than here in the Willamette Valley. One, it's a lot drier. We don't get near as much rain as Sandy does. Two, in the winter, it's a lot colder. And routinely, I remember it being down in the teens or in the 20s. Very common. Very, you know, happen quite often. In the summer, it also gets a lot hotter, right? We easily could have a day in the hundreds, and that wouldn't be unheard of. While here in Sandy, that's so um, pretty rare. Well, how is it that Sandy and Redmond could have such different climates? Well, the answer is actually the four factors of climate change. We're going to explore those today. In this video, we're going to be doing two different things. One, we're going to identify the four factors, the four major factors that can determine climate and can change it. And two, we're going to take those, that knowledge of the four factors and we're going to apply it to Oregon and see why Sandy and why Oregon would have such two very different climates. All right, well, in previous videos, we've defined what climate is. We saw that climate is the average weather for a very specific place over time, and usually a year. It changes from place to place, and in another video, we're going to look at the different types of climate. But really, I want you to understand that climate is the average weather, right? Remember the closets? Climate is the clothes you have in your closet, whereas weather has the clothes you have on. Well, climate can be changed and does change throughout the Earth, and it's done through four major factors. The first one is just basically where you are. Right? Where you are in distance in relationship to the equator. How far you are from the equator, it's called latitude. Right? How far north or how far south. Generally, generally, the further away you get from the equator, the colder it gets, right? If you look at, you think of the lush, lush tropical jungles of the Brazilian rainforest, which is right on the equator, versus the North Pole, which is about as far away as you can get. Actually, it is the far away you can get. It's a lot different. The, cold, the further away you get, the colder it is. And the reason that is happening is because sunlight is striking the Earth at the equator straight on, and so it's hitting directly on, where... Up at the North Pole, sunlight is hitting at an angle, and that angle does not give as much heat and temperature, and so you get colder poles and warmer here at the equator. It also has to do with the way the Earth's tipped. It's tilted. In fact, what happens because of that is we get seasons. So, because the further away you get, generally speaking, the further away you get from the equator, because of that angle of the sunlight, the colder it gets. So, further away, colder. Closer to the equator, warmer. It also depends, and our two second factor, is the prevailing winds. You know, all across the Earth, the wind is pretty much growing. In fact, there's a, a constant uh, wind called the jet stream. And winds mostly blow in one direction for a very specific place. Like, here in Oregon, the winds generally come from the west and go to the east. And... If you're in the southern hemisphere, it's usually opposite. Wind usually comes from the east and blows to the west. It has something to do with something called the Coriolis effect. We're not going to get too much into that. But wind, dependent upon which way it's blowing and where you are, can really affect your, uh, your climate. Think of the coast. If the wind is coming from the west and blowing to the east, it's blowing from the ocean over to the land, and it's going to be able to bring all the water that's out in the ocean to the land you get a lot more rain. So why Western Oregon has a lot more rain, for one thing, is because it's next to the ocean and the winds are bringing it there. Whereas if you look at the climate of, let's say, Nebraska, the winds are still blowing to the west, but there's just no land there, so it's pretty dry versus, well, Western Oregon. Okay. So the direction of the winds and what they're blowing over determines how much water and rain you're getting. That's a big factor of climate. So our first factor was how far north you're getting. Our second factor is which direction the winds are blowing and where they're blowing over. Those two factors are also affected by the landforms. I think it's pretty understand that if you go up in elevation, if you were to hike up Mount Hood per se, it would get colder the further north you went. I'm not north, I'm sorry, the further up you get. Also north. 
So I can give you an example. Uh, Mauna Loa in Hawaii. It's actually a volcano. All of Hawaii is, but it's a peak there. And if you go all the way up to the top, there's actually a glacier. In fact, people ski in Hawaii on Mauna Loa. And the reason they can is because it is high enough that the temperature is cold enough to have snow. Still Hawaii, but because it's high up in the air, it's able to keep the temperature low. The higher up you go, the colder it gets. Mountains also, because they go colder as you go, are able to force air to when it rises to drop water. This is called a rain shadow because what happens is as a weather storm comes in over and hits a mountain, it has to climb up and it climbs up into cold air and when it does climb, that water falls down. So eventually that cloud makes it over the mountain but there's no rain left on the other side. It causes rain to fall on the windward side, or for in our case, the west side, and be the dry side is on the leeward side, which is the other side of the mountain. They call that a rain shadow because the land, not only is it getting colder, but it's blocking that weather to come in. So the climate on either side is very different. And lastly, believe it or not, ocean currents can play a huge role in climate. Have you ever looked at a map? Look at the United Kingdom, England, let's say, and Anchorage, Alaska. You know, they're not that far off. Anchorage is pretty far north, and so is England, so is London. But they have very different climates. When we think of London, I don't think we think of snow and glaciers. We do think that of Alaska. Well, why is that? They're both, they should have the same climate. They're basically the same distance from the equator. They're both pretty close to the ocean, and so they should have enough storms. The difference is, London has a warm ocean current that flows right off of it. England has a very warm ocean current called ocean current that's bringing warm water and warming the United Kingdoms. That's one of the reasons why people are able to live there and it's not be this icy cold place much like northern Alaska because there's warm water coming from the ocean. The ocean can drive climate very much like in London and England, well, we've seen that it's when it's warmer because there's warm ocean water. So we've had four different factors, right? Let's look at it. We had where you are on the earth, the distance from the equator. They've had the prevailing winds, right? Which direction the wind is coming and is it coming over water is going to determine how many storms you get. Land forms, the higher up you go, the colder it gets. And if you're behind a mountain, that when it rises, it's going to drop the rain, and so you won't have as much rain if you're on the other side of, an island, of a, well, a mountain. And then finally, ocean currents, that if you're next to a warm ocean current, it'll warm your climate. Those four factors help determine the overall climate on our planet. Now, we can look at Oregon here, and there is our climate map right there. You can notice that giant side of red. Well, what's just on the western side? of that giant red area. That's the Cascades. It's a giant mountain range. Right? And if you look, it's green, pretty green, on the other side, on the west side. So we can look at our factors. Well, factor one, that the further away you are from the equator, the colder it gets. Well, we're right around the 45th parallel. In fact, the 45th, halfway between the equator and the pole, runs right through Oregon, right around Salem. So. Now, we're all pretty much the same. We're all right on the 45th. We can look at prevailing winds. Well, just to the west of us, we have a giant ocean that's bringing, right, the Pacific, that's bringing storms and rainfall into western Oregon, and so you get a lot of rain in western Oregon. Landforms. Well, in the middle, we have these Cascade Mountains that are rising the elevation. So when a storm from comes in over the um over the Pacific and hits those, they rise up and hit the cold air. That cold air makes it rain and so all the rain falls on the western side and the eastern side is dry. It's a rain shadow. That's why the climate in Redmond is so much different than the climate here in Sandy. It's those darn Cascade Mountains blocking our rain. Well, in this video we did four things. We identified the four major factors to determine the climate. We looked at how landforms, prevailing winds, where you are on the earth, and ocean currents help determine your climate. And we saw that Oregon's climate is largely driven 
by the mountain range, which is causing the, land, the eastern side to be dry, and the Pacific Ocean, which is causing the western side to get rain. So I want to remind you how these videos work. If there's something you're not understanding, feel free to hit pause or go back and watch it again. If you're completely stuck, watch the whole video again, and you can take it at your time. But remember to always keep moving forward.